I do believe I'm a self-appointed amateur archivist. The number of front yards I've photographed over the years would be well over a thousand. Ones that are a little bit different or even extraordinary, or sometimes heroic as I would like to put it. You wouldn't see their bird bath in Bunnings, for example. One of the most extraordinary ones that I've come across is basically a scale model of the Parthenon in, in Toot Garouk. It's got a sloping front yard, then it builds up to the house, and then it's got all the columns, and then inside it's got a statue of David, the whole thing. It is mind-bending. It gradually became my um, calling <laughs> to, to, to try and record what, what I felt was on a tipping point. Um, perhaps could not survive very much longer. I also like ones that represent a period that's perhaps passing and, and maybe the, the pretty soon the house will change hands and that won't even exist anymore. Um, and so I like to capture that for posterity. I find these places by uh, just wandering around. I'm always driving around as well, looking for subject matter. There's one in Reservoir, which is a, a, a triple-tier fountain with full-size dolphins gallivanting made of concrete inlaid with pebbles and mosaic. It's one of those locally famous, you've got to see it to believe it kind of things that uh, I think most people up, in the, uh, up around that area know. Well, Dad started building the fountain in the late 60s, so Dad migrated in the early 50s and had the, the idea of building the fountain. I've never really had a conversation with him as to why he built the fountain. It got a lot of interesting attention and comments, some complimentary, some not so complimentary, but um, as a grown adult, I begin to appreciate what Dad's actually created. Um, the fact that um, he actually designed and built the fountain himself, um, and uh, it's quite an amazing achievement. This man has been possessed by inspiration. Every part of it has a story. Uh, for example, on the base there you'll see a whole bunch of uh, little animals. They were all plastic containers that uh, had lollies in them. Dad would, would buy them and ask us to hurry along and eat the, eat the lollies so that he could fill them with cement and, and add them to the actual fountain. The teeth themselves are, are the edges of Sally No More Gaps. Just around the corner from there, there's another one, which I feel must have been made by the same person because it's got all the same hallmarks. But it's, it's similar, it's got a big bowl and it looks like a couple of fish tails coming out of it. Um, fantastic. Yeah, Dad built that as well. That was the first fountain that he built. Um, so he built that um, probably in the late 50s. Um, obviously, it's not motorised and not quite as um, ornate or as complex as this, but um, yeah, that was uh, our, our grandparents' house, which Dad um, first built that. Yeah. I like to find the extraordinary in the ordinary. When I saw that there were two twin tyre swans in uh, Reservoir, I raced along there and it's a really, it's so great to see them because they're well maintained, sitting on little bits of um, pipe. I've been here 20 years. Some people can say, ah, nice, very, very nice there. I've got the role of a pedestrian and I will take photos uh, just as I go by as best I can, but then if I need to get a better angle, for, I need to go onto the property, of course, I'll knock on the door and then I do get a bit of a story. Quite often they're very happy and proud to tell me a little bit about it and uh, how it came to be and that sort of thing. You get a lot of admiration from the neighbours, the neighbours love it. The neighbours, huh? yeah. yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and the kids? Yep, keep someone photo and uh, Every day, someone, someone every day. Photo. Every yeah. day. Yeah. Any animal. Any animal. animal yeah. And there's and the deer still there. Yep. And you, the swan. You've yeah. got the swan since that photo yeah. was taken. Yeah. yeah. And I also love the map of Australia. Yeah, Australia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you didn't leave out Tasmania. Tasmania be fair. Be careful. Tasmania. You've got to have Tasmania. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> 
that house really just jumps out and catches your eye because it's got a lot of fancy topiary, a lot of work put into it. What's this, Cypress? On the farm, you'd want the farm. Yeah, you'd want yeah. The farm. yeah. My primary motivation in all the photographic projects I do, I guess, is to record suburban vernacular, the, the everyday, the uh, previously considered unremarkable, just for the record, to put it on the archive and to keep it for future generations to look at, because I myself find it very interesting in the face of t changes of taste, demographic, they linger on still. They are echoes of a, of a previous life. I think this thing will be around forever. <laughs> I think it's going to outlast us all.